Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I will show you how to turn your handwritten text into a logo. I now have this app Illustrator for iPad open, and I wrote these parts at the bottom by hand. And there is a way to make these handwritten lines into a vector using multiple apps, and that's what I will be talking about today. You can do all of these things on your iPad, so I believe this will be super useful. We will use a few apps today including Procreate, Adobe Capture, and an Illustrator for iPad. We will be using these three apps today, so if you are interested in designing on your iPad, please watch this video until the end. First, let's start with the app Procreate. I have my Procreate open here right now, and these letters were written by hand in pencil already, like a draft of this logo. It's pretty rough as you can see, but just roughly write your letters here. On top of this, we'll now use what's called a script brush and start working on the final version to make it nice. For the draft, there is this bar where you can adjust the transparency level here, so lower it slightly. Then add a new layer from the plus button, and this is where we will be drawing our final version. To do that, we'll use black color. It's better to use a brighter color like pink for your draft, as it's easier to see, but grab black color for the final version here. And the brush I'm using this time is number 16 Sea Turtles, among one of my set of Procreate brushes called Script Brush Set. I'll put the link to them in the description just in case, so feel free to take a look and download them. And it's totally fine to use a different brush as well if you don't have it. They have a category here named Inking, where you can find many good script brushes, so you could choose one like Studio Pen, Brush Pen, Calligraphy Pen, and many more. So go ahead and pick one of these brushes. Once you grab your brush, let's start tracing the letters in pink or whatever color you use for your draft. This part can be a bit tricky as you have to adjust your writing pressure and stuff, but the good news is that you can erase and redo them as much as you want. So try your best and work on this part until you're happy with how they look. I myself always erase and redo this part many times too, even though you can't really tell that from this video as I already edited. But if you look at something like stylish script brush handwritten letters, you can easily find a bunch of these letters you can refer to. So it might be a good idea to refer to them as you work on these as well. Alright, just like this, I managed to finish writing my handwritten letters. I now want to export this, so set the pink lines invisible to leave only the letters in black. And go to the top and tap this option that says Action at the top. Select Share and export in JPEG. For now, I'll save it to my camera roll. Now we'll move on to a different app. This time we'll be using the app called Adobe Capture. Using this Adobe Capture, we want to turn our handwritten letters into a vector. Once you have the app open, in the middle at the bottom here, you can find a plus button, so press this. Load photos, click on camera roll at the very top, and choose this image of the logo, the one with handwritten letters. Now the screen should look something like this. And if you go to the bottom right, you can find these options like letters and shapes, but go ahead and choose shapes. This is actually what we will use to turn the image or the photo into a vector. So while keeping shape selected, move the slider on the right and set it higher. This will be the density. We also have some tools on the left, and this is the adjustment tool. So you could rotate, increase the level of contrast, and do many other things. And the option here, the third one from the top, is the auto adjust. So make sure this one, the third from the top, is turned on, and click on the check button. This will then take you to another adjustment panel for vectors this time. So here we'll cut out the white part we don't need. And on the right here we have this option that says smooth, and as we select it, here you should say on and off at the bottom. 
As you turn it on, you can have more smooth curved lines here. Can you tell the difference? So this is when it's off, and this is when it's on. So you can choose to make the lines kind of wobbly or smooth. Because I want to leave the impression of handwriting here, I'm going to set it off and proceed. You can also find other things such as eraser and brushes at the bottom here. So with eraser, for instance, you can easily erase the part of the line that's sticking out like here, as you can see. At the same time, you can also add and make some lines slightly thicker if necessary by tracing over like this with brushes. Once you're done with adjusting all the lines, click on save at the top right. This will be saved in a SVHG format turning into vectors, and here you can choose where you want to save this file. This one gets saved in Adobe Creative Cloud Libraries. So if you're an Adobe subscriber, save it here. It's almost the same as saving to your cloud. You can make a new library too, and for me I already have my file created named Amity Sensei in Adobe Cloud, so I'm just going to save it here. And if you go back to the home screen, it should look something like this. I created a similar logo a bit while ago, so I have two of them. But if you don't have a WCC library, you can also export it to you or save it in a different app from this three dots option. So just remember that you can find a share button at the bottom, where you can decide where to save your file. Okay, let's go to the last step. I now have my file saved in the CC library with Adobe Capture, so we just need to add some finishing touches using Illustrator for iPad. Your canvas can be anything, and once you have it open, we want to insert an image from the CC library. So from the camera button at the bottom left, select the one at the very bottom here that says CC library, select the folder you saved earlier, which will be Amity Sensei for me here, and paste it. This way you can nicely paste your logo on the canvas with an illustrator like this. In case you want to adjust the size, you can do that while tapping the touch shortcut at the bottom left and keeping the width to length ratio like this. Now here we want to brush up on this a bit before we end. When we look at the layers right now, the one at the very top that says group would be this logo here. You can find where it says ungroup here, so select it. We also have this thing that says clipping group when this one is grouped, but go ahead and select release clipping masks. This way now you should have these paths individually, meaning you can move them around however you want. These were put in groups until just now, but we would have to combine them together and make it one. It's a bit difficult to explain, but go ahead and select the logo you have on the screen. And at the very top here on the right, where you can merge shapes, you can find an option to merge all, so select it. This way all of these paths for this logo become one big chunk, letting you to change its color all at once, move it around or change its shape like this. When you want to change the color, go to the color picker on the panel on the left and choose the color of your choice. And you can easily change the color as you can see here. And also as you zoom in, for instance, you might find some lines that are wobbly. And to fix them, we have a tool to adjust anchor points here, the second one from the top on the left. This is a move tool, and the second one is anchor point tool. As you select this, you find a lot of these dots like this, as you can see on the screen. Touch the dots you don't want, and click on the minus button at the bottom, and they will disappear. The fewer dots you have, the more smooth these lines get, so make sure to erase all the unnecessary dots, and your logo will look a lot nicer in the end. In case you want to create a logo combined with a vector illustration like this, Double tap this handwritten text here, where you can still move them around individually, so you can make for example this part, the smaller in size, or rotate them like this. A tip here for making a good looking logo is to find a good balance between your logo and your vector illustration like this.
Alright, I want to put the finishing touches on my logo. I find it better to always group these into one big chunk at the end. Once it's grouped and selected, go to the color panel, choose the color of your choice to change the color all at once. So if you want to have your logo in different colors for instance, all you have to do is to group your logo and copy them to do that. Okay, that's all for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks of iPad, so please do that too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!